Good evening everybody, this is Gordon from Grinning Gargoyle Gaming. I am joined tonight by my players for a special episode. Um, we have Alan playing as Xerxes, we have Mickey playing Siren, we have Byron playing Cyan, we have Neville playing Beiru, we have Peter playing Carolus, and Richard playing Carcarius. When last we met or saw our heroes, they had uh, made their way um, back to the ducal city of Seton, where they, well, after they had deposited a certain glowing crystal item on a beach somewhere in the Azure Sea, and yeah, they have now returned to port and were about to engage in some count time. Um, just as a little bit of a reminder to you guys, there's also uh, the Duke that requested a message, a message, a meeting. There we go. Um, so yes, I do not know what you guys would like to do first. I will leave it up to you. Oh, I think we should start, like getting to port and whatever. Well, you guys are already <laughs> in port. You guys are docked. The ship is uh, secure. Um, I was choked. I tried finding information. Yeah, you try finding information. One little point Indeed. of order, though. Um, the dead people on board ship. What are you <clears> doing <throat> with them? Doing that sea thing. No. Oh. Burial thing. Probably, probably taking them to their respective temples or families. All right. Um, I'm trying to think if I mean, that would we'll, require we'll, we'll a, word. a same. The thing is, because they were on loan from you from the Duke, yeah. I should imagine yeah. that one of the Ducal uh, aides would have had information, if not, uh, you know, old Lord uh, Restford would most likely be able to point you in the right hey. direction. So all the crew members themselves would know what to do. So, okay, I'm not going to belabor that point at all, then. Um, uh, so, I mean, they, they are preserved for, like, ten days, so... Yeah, I know, they were, and, I mean, it only took you guys, like, what, half a day to get back to Seton itself, so, yeah, you should, yeah. there should be plenty of time, nothing's going to happen to them. Um, you can reach out to the local temple, the Procan and Osprum as well, to, you know, come perform the... The final rites, or you guys can do it yourselves since they're part of your crew. I, I'll leave it to the two clerics. What do you guys think? Uh, hey, why don't we divide? There's what ten of them, right? Uh, five, 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 five. Yeah, that seems fair. Five souls yeah. for Osprim, five souls for Broken. Yeah, <laughs> those Berkses you can't take any for yourself. No, no. I'm having ten souls. <laughs> <laughs> they're gone. It's too late for you. They're gone. They're gone. Um, um. Yeah. Well, it, uh, maybe. Can I have the yeah. older ones? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> All right. So you, you, you divvy up the corpses. <laughs> Sounds terrible. Like, I'll trade. I'll trade you this one for that slightly younger one. Oh, God. Uh, um, I like the gristle in his eye. Yeah. All right. Fine. Okay. <laughs> kind of like roll him over to you. <laughs> I'm drunk enough with this. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mickey. <laughs> I, I kind of agree. <laughs> I kind of agree. Yeah. Um, alrighty, so you guys, it won't take you long. I mean, with a day, you would be able to do, you'd probably be able to do like a, a mass burial, if you will. Um, At sea, yeah. right? Well, no, because the, the tenets of both of your gods would be the recovery of sailors so that they can <clears> be buried. Strangely enough, on land. That yeah. is ironic, so yeah. We, we it take it to the temple and but then it's... go they'd be buried in either unmarked graves or marked graves, depending what the fa if we can find the families. I no, think well, I mean, would like I would... start like tying rocks around their feet or something and then like look <laughs> her over at um Karkarius to see like if he's doing the same. No, I'll look back it's like we we're not throwing them in the harbour. They need to go <laughs> to the graveyard. But I mean, like, a harbor's a graveyard, right? 
Yeah, yeah, can be. Yeah, but you don't necessarily want to yeah. jump in for a swim and then just run into a dead body. And that's I'm right. Gonna, like, dump bodies into the ocean. Yeah, that's I'm... right. And the poor fisherman as well. Yeah, good points. Yeah, imagine hooking some poor skull. It's pretty brutal. Like, you, you, you think you've got a big fish, next thing it's just <laughs> someone's face screaming at you. That would be okay, cool. Okay, point taken. Alright, let's um, <laughs> let's bury them, like, on the beach then, I guess. <laughs> oh, there, there is a graveyard in, yes. in town that we can bury them at. Yes, there is. That would be more <laughs> appropriate. <laughs> I mean, we, we may need a wheelbarrow or a cart for all the bodies. Well, luckily, you happen to be down at the docks. And carts are not a difficult thing to get hold of, to have you. So, yes. Yeah, but a cart for bodies? <laughs> yes, of course. What do you think happens with everybody else who dies at sea? True. Well, most people probably just kick them overboard like Cyan would. Actually, also, I, I would imagine that there would be like some young acolyte from you know, each of the temples that just loiters around the docks gambling all day until ships come in with bodies and then he's just like hey, he's got his cart ready <laughs> hey you child bring the cart bring the body cart say again because no older older one wants the job <laughs> how old are you little person um, <laughs> I was like, I don't want to be ageist, so we can totally have an old acolyte. Oh, no. <laughs> no I want a child, a child acolyte. Uh, it must be like seven, I'm kidding. No, it wouldn't be that young. I mean, they'd have to actually have some sort of strength behind them. So probably well, be teenagers, 13, well. 14 years old. Okay. Um, hey, little boy, girl, <laughs> person. Um, I've got some bodies here for you. You mind uh, loading them up? Sure thing, sir. I'll give you um, two copper for each. Sure thing, sir. <laughs> Dad. Holds out his hand. Uh, yeah. Sign, so, so, you know, he normally does this for free, right? Yeah, but I mean, this is like, it's a really shitty job. <laughs> <laughs> the kid's just standing there looking, watching the coins in your hand, waiting <laughs> yeah. for them to drop into That's his palm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I flick him a whole silver. All right, awesome. Wow. Generous, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, let's yes. let's get these guys loaded up and buried. So right, let's do it. He he gives like a sharp whistle, which I won't even attempt to replicate <laughs> because I can't. And um, we see two two other acolytes. Um, you see that two of them are from the Temple of Procan. One is from. Um, ice uh, Icebrim. Where the fuck did that come from? Osprim. <laughs> <laughs> um, and these three with their the, carts load up the... The mace comes to fruition. <laughs> <laughs> they, um, they start, you know, they bring up the carts and the rest of the sailors. Um, sort of like, uh, to those that it was, was their friends, this kind of like form this informal escort um, of these kids with these carts um, and how to push them up the hill towards the temple area. Uh, so you guys are following along, or...? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think I'm going to chat to the kids um, and, like, um, ask them if they know about Osprum and, like, you know, this is where a lot of their bodies come from, is from the sea, and, you know, Osprum kind of provides that. Like, maybe they should consider worshipping her. Well, like I said, one of them is actually an acolyte from Osprum's temple. The other two are... And the other? Procan. Oh, damn. I stopped talking to them. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a valiant attempt, sign. Yeah, as soon as I find out, as soon as I see the little symbol, I'm like, oh, just stop mid-sentence. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, so, yes, you guys... I wonder what the, if this would classify as religious, like religious... I swear, I haven't been drinking. But apparently, my... My brain is short circuiting or something. Um, I like this. Make me, you two, as you're busy performing the services for these sailors, um, I would like you to both make me one of two checks. You can either do uh, an intelligence religion check or you can do a charisma persuasion check for me. Um, what do we, what is this about? This is now going going about actually uh, 
performing the burial rites and things uh, while the other sailors are um you know there and watching you okay you guys yeah. managed to do this without a hit without a hitch sign you're learning that you have acquired in the more formal uh practices mm -hmm. of the church of osprim um have really come to fruition here and uh, you deliver a, a a very touching sermon um though at the end of the sermon you still are trying to convince them that the best way to dispose of the bodies is to dump them in the harbor as uh, it just wishes. seems so <laughs> um, Put it this way they they will go into the earth here and eventually make their way to the ocean from the earth um i guess so but well, the way it plays out is Cyan, you earn two favors from the sailors that are attending at this point. Um, heck yeah. Uh, these favors can be anything from, you know, f you know paying a further devotion to Ostrom in you know, the form of a donation. Um, you can ask for help at some point, whatever you like. Uh, just uh, make a note of it somewhere. Um, I don't know. Carcarius, you are also similarly um, blessed, if I can put it that way. I think that's the right word to use for it. Um, you have earned one favor with some of the crew above the wave piercer, above, aboard the wave <laughs> piercer, um, that you can also use to a similar, a similar thing. The favor is just a promise of future assistance um, yeah. in some way, shape, or form. Um, but yeah, it's pretty good. Nice. Um, all right, then. So with the, the the sailors taken care of, the rest of you guys, I know uh, Mickey was off exploring the pubs where she found the rusty knocker. I think Beiru was with her. Um, I know a couple of you guys wanted to do shopping and that stuff, but would you guys do that necessarily on the first day back into port, or would you go see the Duke? I think, I think we would have... Oh, well, I would. Well, here's my suggestion, right? So there's lots of stuff we need to sell here. I'm good at uh, persuasion, so uh, it looks like it's you guys all you like want. persuasions. Maybe sign. Well, while I'm with you guys now, uh, we sort of sell all the stuff, split the bucks, and then people can go their separate downtime ways. You know? Well, I, I could... think. Help. Yeah, Mickey. No, I can help. I have a plus ten in persuasion. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> I have a plus ten in persuasion. I was... Yeah, so then, uh, yeah, I'm helping you. <laughs> yeah, but what I was going to say is, let's maybe go see the Duke first before he hears rumors and sort of word of mouth rather than straight from us about the crystal and the island and everything. What crystal? Probably uh, a good idea. <laughs> what crystal? <laughs> Green one. Okay, what so... What island? I think most of you guys one. were... Like heading towards the Lark and Laurel as well to get a night's rest, eh? Mm. Um, so I'm gonna do a long rest and then you guys can go do all of this stuff in the morning. Hello, why is this not working? Good idea. Let's see what spells I'll need today. You guys get a long rest, you get back some. Uh, well, because this is a luxury place, I'm gonna say you get back all your hit die so i'm just doing a double long rest nice. um shoot there was something that i thought of and then now it's completely gone straight out of my freaking mind okay yes so you guys have met at the glass and laurel by, by a couple of things first of all that evening um for two of you there are messages that have been left um Xerxes, I need you to roll a percentile die for me, please. Hundred and four. <laughs> a fourteen. Nice. Um, you are lucky because there was a twenty percent chance that this person was in town. Uh, waiting for you at the Larkin Laurel, uh, you can see he's purchased himself some. 
uh, better looking equipment and clothing. Uh, he's looking a little bit more rested, a little bit pinker in the cheeks. Um, yes, you find Punkata relaxing in the parlor. And he's incredibly happy to see you all as you enter the Lark and Laurel. He stands up and dusts himself off and comes rushing towards you with his hand held out, ready to shake hands with anybody who's willing to do so. I'll say, you look well, and I'll shake his hand. He says, yes, sir, I've, I've, I've managed to get myself a commission aboard one of the merchant vessels. Hey, guys, who's this again? <laughs> he's, he's the person that was on the first ship uh, just offshore that we oh. like, let go. He's a wizard. Oh, the one in the, was he in the cage? No. No, he's, no. he's the one. one that was helping the bandits, and then... Yeah. Decided that his life was more important. Was oh. it fine? was like, cool, I'll do anything if you let me live. Oh, yeah, right, right, yeah, okay. Actually, that was before Cyan joined the group, believe it or not. Really? I don't think Cyan was with you guys when you took the ghost, the sea ghost. I think I I was. Know. Hey, was. Were you? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh yes, you went to Bay, Bay, to 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 Burl first, and then you went down there. Oh, yes, yeah. okay, now that's right, that's right. No, you didn't try to blow up that ship. Um, no, you basically held his his spellbook hostage. Yeah. Um, and since then, well, he's sort of been ranking for you guys. And his. Uh, and pretty much his life. Yes. Yeah, he was pretty much at your uh, mercy. Um, but he says, I have a most fascinating story to tell you. Should you ever come across um, a dragon turtle traveling around the Azure Sea, um, take a careful look if you have a spyglass upon you at its back. Because there is one particular dragon turtle that has an entire village traveling upon it. Sounds cool. It is the township of Badu. Badu being the dragon turtle. He says, you might find some work there. It's an interesting place. Some odds and ends. Weird people. Not, 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 not going to downplay that. Um, but there's very strict rules about how you should conduct yourself uh, uh, on the... Uh, well, we'll call it an island, but it's not really an island. Keep what an eye What kind of people live on, on the turtle? Oh, all kinds. There's a couple of gnomes, gnome jewelers there. There's, um, let me just grab, grab the note quickly. Uh, it's actually, the whole place is run by uh, a druid that seems to be uh, the chief friend, if you will, um, of, of this dragon turtle. Uh, goes by the name of Carmelie. C-A-R-M-A-L-E-E. -E. She seems to be the one that uh, makes sure that the turtle doesn't dive below the waters and drown everyone. That's very interesting. That's a good uh, person to know. You're thinking back to the dragon turtle we saw off in the distance. Could have been. Did it seem like that had a village on its back? It was... You guys didn't roll well enough. So it was actually, it could have been a friendly turtle with the village, wanting to try. <laughs> it could have been, and it could have just as easily have been a not so friendly dragon turtle without a village wanting to eat you. <laughs> the difference yeah. between a 9 and a 10. Pretty much. Pretty much. Um, yeah, but Pukenta but basically tells you a little bit about what he's been doing. Um, He's called, he's, he says um, the ship that he's working aboard at the moment is called the, the Razor's Crest. And um, he's set to, to leave the next week or so, um, and they'll be traveling to the jungles to the south um, in an effort to procure spices. Uh, he's been hired on as basically the weather wizard. As in food spices? Yes. Not as in other spices. <laughs> Not as in the spice melange. Anyway, that's a reference to Dune, if anybody cares. Um, yeah, 
the other thing, the other message is there is a small note, a piece of paper. Uh, not really a note, it's parchment that's been folded up very neatly. Um, it has a wax seal on it, and um, the proprietess offers it to you, good dwarf. Uh, it is addressed to Corollas, um, and the insignia on the wax is that of the, uh, the I was, what would you call it? The monastery? The main monastery? The main uh, monastery, oh. Of the order of the olive dragon turtle. Oh. There's a lot of dragon, dragon turtles dragon. tonight. I don't know why. I just realized the ir irony. Anyway. Um, so she hands it to you. Do you read it here? What do you do? Yeah, uh, while there's light. Uh, well, this would this would be at at night or the next morning. I'll leave it up to Is you. It in, are we in a tavern? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in the Lark and Laurel. Your luxury uh, accommodations. I'll I'll use a candle or a torch to read it. Um, basically, what they've um, the note that you've got. Sorry, I just want to so see. Can wait for a second, yeah. I can't find. Hey, say again. I just want to interject here. Yeah. Mr. Dwarf, you have a freaking sword that makes so much light. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but um, I don't want to be pretentious in a tavern, swinging around a sword of light and flame. It's just nightlight. <laughs> it's nightlight. Yeah. <laughs> it's so you can find it out. This is a fancy establishment. You can literally tell them, hey, bring me a light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't want to pull out my sword in front of everyone. Where are we? <laughs> Your short sword. <laughs> it's, oh. it's, uh, unfortunately, it's a short sword. It's adequate. <laughs> <laughs> adequate sword. It is, it, is a, it is an adequate sword. I like that. <laughs> it it's a hot sword, at least. Yeah, you know what they say, it's not the length, it's the girth. It but anyway. That's the job. <laughs> um, so, the letter. Do you read it? <laughs> um, so basically, it is a letter from the one of the many scribes that serve as secretaries to the Grand Master of your order. Um, and please pronounce his name for me, because I'm not certain how to. Let me check what's his name first. Oh, shut <laughs> That's still still to be determined. No, I've got it here. <laughs> or how yeah, to pronounce I see it. it. Now as well, but I can't remember. <laughs> so, so I just attempt to pronounce it like I would pronounce it. Because <laughs> to me it would be Mateato Mateato. No, no, it, no just he's just Mateato. Just Is it just thing. Mateato? One singular. No, okay. They should be a. But they, they should be a, a comma there. Huh. Okay. I'll we'll just quickly put in a comma. There you go. 100%. So, Mateo, the Grand Master, Mateo. is apparently traveling down from the capital of Neoldra. Um, and it's a brief description of the route that he is going to be taking. And he is supposed <laughs> to be traveling. Oh, excuse me. Um, some ways through the Dreadwood, but on one of the, what is considered the more safer routes because it's so heavily patrolled by the King's men. Um, but him and a small entourage, no more than 15 to 20 uh, monks, um, as well as a couple of other dignitaries from the capital, uh, will be traveling down to Seton. Um, when you look at the date on this particular piece of paper when this wind was written um, I mean you know sometimes it can take a while even for a speeded courier to get something from the capital down here to the arse end of the kingdom of Kierland um, but looking at it um, this was sent about two and a half months ago and it is not that long a journey uh -oh. and the Grand Master, as far as you are aware, is not in Seton. Is now in Seton? No, he's not. He's not. He should be here, but he's not. Oh. Sure, okay. 
So, take that to mean as what you will. If you'd like to reply to the monastery, uh, you can find a, uh, a courier service that will do that for you. For like so a silver piece. He's on his way from where he's from to? To Seaton. Seaton. Uh, along with a bunch of other guys, a bunch of nobles from, from the king's court, um, and uh, entourage of monks and soldiers and things. Um, basically on a, on a, what would you call it, like a sightseeing, just a, a tour of the, of the country to see what's going da- on down here in the south. But the message was dated over two and a half months ago, so you should have been here already. Pretty much. Mm. That's... Okay, well, while we have down time, that's one thing I'm going to start investigating. Cool. Um, so, just keep that in mind for when we start doing downtime stuff. So, nothing else of interest for you at the Lark and Laurel. As you go to sleep in that, um, you first of all, you're astounded by the luxurious comfort that you find yourselves in. Uh, once again, you are, are being fed much better food than the chef on board the, the ship provided. <laughs> uh, no fish, first of all. You get some nice lamb and beef, whatever your heart's content. Um, the next morning, if you're not doing anything else, you rise to a fantastic smelling breakfast that you can smell wafting up the stairs to your rooms. Um, you know, down Ooh, in the... I think you need the... to talk to the chef. <laughs> Listen, if you want pork, freaking lamb and that kind of crap on the ship, you get it on the damn ship. <laughs> well, there's enough room in the hold. You could purchase yeah, these well, things. Somebody can tend to the animals down there. Don't have a druid. <laughs> Who's going to do the slaughtering and butchering? I can practice. <laughs> <laughs> that, I should have guessed. Have issue taking care of them that I have an issue with. But if, if somebody wants to take care of them, I'll do it. No problem. Uh, take well, care of them. Someone else can take care of them. Take care of them or take care of them. I'll take, take care. care of them. Take care <laughs> of them. Oh, uh, goodness. So. Yeah, the next morning you guys are awake, up and about. Where are you off to first? Oh. If we all get together, um, is there a shop on the way that we can stop at? <clears throat> like a jeweler and a general trading goods store on the way to the... Um, who, who are you saying? The, 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 Duke. the Duke. Duke, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, well, you do know that the Duke's Court only officially opens a little bit later in the morning at like 10. So if you're up and about early enough, um, yeah, you'd be able to go pass through the market areas um, on your way, you know, to the, the Ducal Palace. Um, so are you looking just for like general places where you can sell some of the, the stuff that you guys have hoarded? So mostly jewelry and uh, yeah, just like you know, uh, weapons and general, yeah, mostly weapons and jewelry, really. Is it all the stuff that's sitting in the party sheet at the moment? Yeah, pretty much. All right, give me a second. What, what was our deal with the Duke again on our, whatever we claimed from a mission? Like when he needed to get a cut or something, I remember. Um, no, uh, for your, let, your letters of mark, for your privateering, um, yeah. basically whatever you, if you encounter any, uh, pirates or you know, any of the sea princes, um, ships, etc. uh, if you engage and take their stuff, yeah. you, it's, I think, what's it? 50% of it. Okay. So basically stolen goods, really. Yes. Anything, goods. anything that's re- been recovered effectively. Okay. Um, nice. I see the letters. Um, oh no, this is a book. Le- Legal distinctions and letters of Mark um, is still in the in the thing. Are you going to get rid of those as well? Because I'm seeing five bolts of rare silk. Yeah, 
Wait, do you need to... Did, Bear, did you say you wanted one of the sulks or not? The uh, sulks, no. That was die, hey. Okay. Uh, yeah, we each got a vial of rare ink or something like that. It was the rare ink, yes. Um, yeah, if no one wants this, uh, if no one needs a salt, let's get rid of it. Any objections? Neville, I couldn't hear you there. Doesn't the bard want a salt? Doesn't the bard want it? Mickey, would you like any silk? Silk. Make yourself some silk, silk pajamas? <laughs> I don't know. Can I make silk rope? Can you make silk rope? Wink. <laughs> that is an interesting She's question. She's preparing for when Xerxes converts the ship. I am always Give me a second and I will check something for you quickly. How much does this weigh? Weight of five. 60 feet of silk rope weighs three pounds. Hmm. Okay, just so you're aware. Each one of these bolts weighs five pounds and is worth a hundred gold pieces. Sixty feet yeah. of silk rope costs mm -hmm. twelve gold pieces. And weighs wow. about three pounds. We can literally all get five. Yeah. So if you if you wanna like come out on top money wise, I'd say sell the, the bolts of silk and just buy silk rope. <laughs> Fine. I could just buy silk pajamas then. You can do that too. Yeah, we can yeah, I'm going to help uh, persuade whatever store or shop we're in to get a better deal on everything we're selling. Well, I mean, in the market area, there's lots of cloth merchants and things flogging things, so you can, um, you can you know do do the rounds trying to find whoever's going to give you the best deal. Um, it won't be a single merchant that you're dealing with, and this will go for most of this, these sundry items that you're trying to sell. It's only really like magical things that you're trying to flog that will be somebody more specific or like artwork. Um, okay. So give me a persuasion check or deception check or intimidation Persuasion. check <laughs> with advantage i'm just allowing you advantage. different ways with advantage, yeah. with advantage. this is gonna hope. be ridiculous isn't it probably <laughs> yep yep <laughs> that is a natural 20 for a 30 persuasion <laughs> that's crazy I'm trying to decide how to do this. Roll me a D100, please, Mickey. No. no, no, that's not that's not how you do it. <laughs> right, right, right. Click on your um, D10. D10. And just a percentage one. And then just a percentage. Oh, very nice. That is very nice. So you, uh, if it was going to be low, I would have added 10%, but I think a 50% increase is more than enough. So um, I'll allow that roll to stand for all the stuff that you're going to flog. Um, so 500 gold pieces is going to turn into 750 gold pieces. Do we need, I don't think we need candlesticks to get rid of it. <laughs> It's the damage statue. Uh, hold on, one second at a time. One thing at a time. Okay, okay, the candlesticks are worth 10 gold pieces. So that's another 20. Alright. Uh, take it you hanging. Well, the cart, I think, is still see, is sitting in uh, yeah, salt mod. Mod. Uh, uh, That chain mail vest. Does anyone want chain mail? Chain mail? Mm. No. Salad. Okay. 37 gold pieces. 
Um, uh, crossbow bolts? What's up? Can I sell some stuff at this general store as well? Absolutely. We'll go through each of you guys so you can clean up your, your inventory if you'd like. Okay, no. You can keep the bolts. Uh, daggers, crossbow bolts, cross, crossbow, I mean light crossbows. Six of them. Anybody want a light crossbow? No, I'm good. Long box. Ooh. Ooh, okay, so that that oh, wow. Well, they're, they're, that's only like six gold pieces. The dagger? Got it. Nobody collecting daggers like Hayes. <laughs> no, it's only you that wish to stuff it. How is a dagger worth two gold and a light crossbow is only worth one? More steel in the dagger? More stab. <laughs> Could be. Beats me. Alright. Yeah. Um, statue and jade. Okay, so damage statue, 20 gold pieces. Uh, the gems and jewelry. Holy shit, that's like a thousand gold pieces worth. You guys get rid of it? Yeah. Uh, okay, the three pieces of jade. 300 yeah. gold. Yeah. And. Okay, let's look. Keeping all the potions, quarter staff is worth two silver pieces, okay. And then everything at the end from the shield. Okay, well I'm gonna just do a mental thing in my head. That's 30. The short bow is 25, so that's gonna be 42. No, 67. Spear. Yeah. Does anybody want spears? Mm -hmm. I can't even. Two legs. Uh, the studded leather armor? Studded. I don't. What's the studded leather armor? It's 13 plus 2 decks. 12 plus 2 decks. 12 plus whatever your dex bonus is. Maximum of two though, I think. Mm. I'm fine. I'm no, not it's light armor, it's not capped. Oh, really? 12. 12 plus four, 16. No. Keeping it? Okay. Selling it? Mm. You have enough money to just buy a new one. Don't worry yep. about it. Pretty much. Yeah, when I feel crashed. Alrighty, and the rope you're keeping, I assume. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna go through your guys' inventories from left to right. Um, if it would load. Okay, what do you need sold, uh, Alan? Uh, we, uh, um, we're not putting, giving that money to everyone now. Oh, we can do. It's 1,975 no times 1.5. Hello. Crap. 2,962 gold. Hey, yeah. Money, money, money. It's a hell of a lot of money. Yeah. You people need a gold sink. I'm spending a lot of my gold now in this break. <laughs> Trust fund. Four hundred ninety-four gold pieces each. It's quite nice. Fuck yeah. Not okay, so. uh, going from top to bottom. Uh... I forgot we had horses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Somewhere. These tomes. I was hoping to. Used as leverage when finding someone to craft uh, those items for me. Uh, but if I don't need them, I can sell them. So that's up to you. 
No, sir. It is up to you. Are you talking about those ones in the sky blue leather? The fragile tome. Fragile tome, gilded tome. Uh, if if I was going to speak to some sort of wizard to craft me items, they might have been interested in this. So that's the, that's why I sort of have them. Um, if I don't need to. Yeah, I'd say keep them for now. We'll see. Okay, then this diamond we need, that's a quest item. Uh, <laughs> Flag dash <as> quest. <laughs> Um, I don't think I need to sell any of this. Oh, I'm, I, I need to. I want to sell my tent, and I want to buy a fur-lined tent. <laughs> I don't know. Is there such a thing in the? It is. Is it? Really? It's a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh fuck! I've just learned something new, folks. Fur Fancy tent. tent. Not a poor tent. Uh, what the hell is its name? <laughs> it actually just uh, called something tent. Yeah, if you are dash lined tent. Fucked up. <laughs> something. I do yeah. not see it. Fucked yeah. up Ransom. Fucked up Ransom <laughs> tent. <laughs> Only records which you own can be shared. It's 5e Solo Adventure, The Tortured Land. Is that, uh, that's probably why it's not it's not in a book that we're using. Yes. Where the hell does that come from? I don't know. Don't know. But if, if you um, would like to, you can upgrade your tent to a fur-lined <laughs> tent. I'll say it will cost you like five gold pieces. Well, uh, this thing costs 30 and the normal tent costs 22. <laughs> Okay, great. So then that costs you 30. Okay, yeah. Well, I, 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 don't know. I was saying I was happy to spend more. 4217. How much? Uh, 30 gold. Mm. Okay. Cool. Did you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Siren. What? do you want <laughs> to sell if anything Mickey mm. what do you have anything that you want to sell no nope. nope. okay next Zion. <laughs> can you edit this thing for me I can't do so I'll make a note to edit it, edit it later um yeah, I think Zion wants to unload all of his gear, like his weapons. So he's got a broken mace, another mace, a spare shield, <laughs> um, a scale armor. Um, I, I forgot that you were just walking around with all this extra yeah, stuff. Got all this weaponry, you know, just in case I need to arm someone. Just never came about. <laughs> okay, so that's five. Um, scale, mail, oh, shield. Make that ten. Uh, 60 Oop, almost got rid of the sentinel shield 70 gold divided by 2 anything else? Uh, no I think that's it eh? okay so you can add 35 gold pieces to your GP oh yeah. righty Corollas do you have anything you wish to sell? Um, I'm checking it through my stuff. I don't even have a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, potion of healing, potion of climbing. Quarter stuff I'm gonna keep. The normal one. I already gave the other one to someone. Xerxes. Yeah, I've got that quarter stuff you caught. Yeah. So I, I'm, I still have the normal one. Uh, my smith tools with me, torch, uh, water skin, wine skin, enchanted halfling weed, <laughs> dwarf face pipe. Uh, no, I don't really have anything. I uh, four acid vials. That you bought for a very specific reason once upon a time, but I don't remember what that reason yeah. was. Was it for the troll? Yeah. 
and uh, I have I have oil flask as well. Three left. <laughs> well, you never know when they might come in handy. Yeah, so I'm still gonna keep them. <laughs> if you don't want the acid ones, I'll grab it. Do you yeah, really want to give the chef acid? Yeah, it's, it's for flavor. <laughs> Just an extra tang. <laughs> extra zest. Alright, Carcarius. Uh, I just want to get rid of the three of the fancy decanters. Fancy decanters. Three of them. Yeah, I want to keep one to be fancy. Right. <laughs> I don't know why that was unlocked. So that's 60 gold pieces. Cool. And yeah, that's all I really have to sell. Alrighty. So you'll add the 60 gold to yourself, huh? Yeah. Beiru? What junk do you want to get rid of? I don't have junk. Great. So, that means you're done with that for now. So, uh, sorry, I found um, uh, these lanterns, bullseye lanterns. I don't need them, I want to sell them. I've got two <laughs> of them. <laughs> uh, one second, I'm trying to open up your character sheet. Bullseye lanterns, bullseye. I'm a looking for them, but I'm a not a seeing of them. It starts with an L. Lantern, comma, bullseye. Ah, that's why. Okay, that's going to be worth 10 gold pieces. Do I add, add the gold myself? Or... Yes, please do. Okay, and then... Um, so what else did I see here? This principles of navigation. Mm -hmm. Is that important? Like, I'm pretty sure I've read it by now. It probably has no value, like for me to keep it anymore. Probably not. So then that as well. Okay, so that twin flog for ten gold. No. <clears throat> yeah, I think. I mean, like I, I got the shovel. I don't really don't need it, but. It, got in, it came in handy last time, so I'll keep it. Yeah, that's me now. <laughs> yeah, your, your shovel that was used as a, what, a quasi-anchor. Um, yeah. Alrighty. A depth detector. <laughs> so, you guys move through the market. Um, I would like you guys to make me some perception rolls first. As you're busy out and about, wandering around, looking around, seeing what's what. Uh, well, there's the two. Yeah, Cyan, with advantage. <laughs> Twelve. <laughs> Uh, Beiru 15, okay, so Xerxes 17, Kankiri 7, Bims 18, Bims is excluded from this, I should have told you. Um, Corolla's 21, who hasn't rolled? S -s Mickey, Siren? Yes. I require a roll from you, please, milady. What? What roll? A perception. I should get a net 20 or something. Uh, yeah, there yeah, we go. It's 22. Pl 22 is not bad. Wow, you've got a plus 5 in perception as well. That's really good. Alrighty. So, as you're busy doing your, your well, not shopping, your selling, uh, getting rid of a whole bunch of your excess baggage, a um, couple of things become very apparent to you guys. You are noticing um, what appears to be uh, like beggars and things, um, quite a number of them uh, in town, and you know, they seem to be begging for alms. Basically, um, if you asked one of the, the merchants about them, um, they basically let you know that uh, a bunch of these uh, Beggars, well, refugees really is what they are, um, have been coming into town lately um, from the west. 
it appears that there is something that has been displacing them from whatever homes they may have had. This is further, further beyond um, even salt marsh. Uh, these guys come from the Hool marshes. Um, there's even one or two of them who have claimed to come from as far as away as Westkeep. The dragon. Can we ask them what's happening? Why? Where, yeah, where, you can where, ask where them. are you guys coming from? Why? Uh, uh, sir, if you if you can get us some food, I'll tell you whatever you want. I'll just like, give him a ration. I've got rations. Yeah, uh, eat this and drink this uh, warm wine. <laughs> warm wine. <laughs> if I have a like silver piece, and he'll tell you everything. Yeah, pretty much at this point. But he'll take he'll take the food and and the wine at this point. I say thank you, thank you, sir, for your kindness. Oh no, we've 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 lost our homes, our entire village. I lost most of my family. I've only got a couple of wee ones that are are staying outside of town at the moment. Um, he goes on to tell you a story about how there have been marauding hordes of monsters. Um, moving out, you know, from some, from like the drowned forest, from the whole marches, um, you hear some stories that feel, feel a little bit like he might be mixing up details of other stories he's heard, um, because the kind of, uh, descriptions that he's giving you of the creatures that he claims to have been attacked by, arrange everything from like giant spiders to lizard folk to, um, goblins, hobgoblins, ogres. Um, at a point he gets like super excited and says he even saw a giant that absolutely crushed his neighbor's skull by standing on him. Uh, how, did the, how did everyone survive? There looks to be a lot of you uh, around town. We just kept on running, sir. We just kept on running. Some of us had, had boats. Uh, we sailed them for as far as we could uh, along the coast, trying to avoid whatever uh, dangers we could. Um, but it just ain't safe in the west, sir. Um, the king, the king's got to do something. Uh, at this rate, they're going to overrun Westkeep, as if it wasn't bad enough that the sea princes wanted back. Can I ask, uh, what is your, what was your profession? What is I was a farmer, sir. A farmer? That's right, sir. So do you know much about, um, fuck, what's it called? Animal? No, no. <laughs> Looking off animals, I forget. Like uh, Husbandry. Husbandry, animal husbandry, that's the one. I, I, um, I, I know a thing or two, sir, yes. Hey, so yes, someone that can look after our livestock on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> children. How would you like a job, sir? Yeah. Children. We can feed you and we can give you shelter if you look after our livestock on our ship. Even says, ship. I suppose we could probably pay you as well because you've got a family. Shame. Uh, can, can my family join me, sir? Or is this only for me? It's not the safest. I guess there's space on the ship, but uh, we are w wandering adventurers, and at times, you know how it can get at sea. Uh, there may be. How good? How good are your children with a knife? <laughs> no, don't give children knives. Well, my children are only two and three, sir. <laughs> so not good enough yet. N not to quite. Learn. How about a short sword? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are barbarians. Uh, uh, I, uh, m maybe when they're bigger, sir. No. Uh, but I'll, I'll gladly take the job if if well, if you can if you can tell me where to find your ship. I will I will tell my my family. Um, I must just beg one more favor from you, sir. And uh, did you give this guy a silver piece, Mickey, or would you just tell Xerxes about uh, the silver piece? I would have given him a gold piece because he has 
Okay, gold piece would would probably feed his family for a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. quite quite nice. Okay, let me um, try and hide like a um, a foster mother. No, oh, well, his wife is still alive. Is his wife alive? Yes. Okay. She could fight as well. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> she with a great sword. So, guys, no. Um, he says, my wife is actually a fair hand with a bow, sir. Uh, yeah, we are ten sailors down, you know. No, she needs to look after children. I will fight you on this. Fight. Um, so but you're, gonna have to, you're gonna have to stay with the animals on the boat. So if you're okay with putting yourself up there. I, I don't mind, sir. I used to have pigs in me living room. Okay, perfect. Yeah. The smell doesn't bother me at all. So you'll find our boat docked. Uh, it's called the the Wave Piercer. Can't miss it. It's got giant red flaming unicorn flag. <laughs> is that the flag this week? Is that, is that the flag we've got up today? <laughs> oh yeah, it's that the, the flag changes every day. Hey, it's the sails yeah, that change every the week. The sails that change every now and again. <laughs> Grief. At least you can think of it this way: you will always be inconspicuous because nobody will fucking know. <laughs> you know, you're not gonna knock. I was attacked by a ship with black sails and a red unicorn on it. Then the next week, I was attacked by a similar-looking ship, but with pink sails <laughs> and a teddy bear on it. <laughs> oh no! So um, he basically just uh, he begs. Yeah, he, he takes that that gold coin. Um, and he begs you uh, a couple of days to get his family sorted. Um, but he promises, he swears um, that he will be there, ready ready for work, ready for duty. Cool. Now we just have to tell the Duke that we need some livestock on board to feed all of our men. Well, we sir, I, 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 I know how to tell a good goat from a bad one. Would you Would you like... This might be asking a little bit much in terms of, of trust, but um, I could procure supplies for you in town. Goats, maybe a couple of sheep, some chickens, a cow. Fresh milk on a ship is always good. I think we can discuss that yeah. after we've been to the Duke. So we'll let you know, but then essentially, yeah, like... We could easily get him to go buy stuff for us and then send the bowl to uh, a large barrel. Yeah, well, I, w I would play. Let him uh, let him go check the ship, hold in that to see how many animals he's been there, the variety. Yeah. And then, then then he can go and get us a price on on how yeah. much. Okay, give me give a second. A what do you want to say, Byron? What has Cyan got to say? Uh, this is, are we sure we want to give money? Like, more money to like buy stuff to this guy. He sounds like just a peasant. No, we're not. That's exactly it. We're not giving him any money at the moment. We are getting him to go and scout what sort of provision we would need for a boat of our size, and oh. then to give us a an indication of what we would need to get, and we can discuss it there. I want you to bring me five quotes. <laughs> it's kind of. It's just. It's just that like. You know, he had a pig in his living room. It's just he doesn't seem like, I don't know, the best for the job. I don't know. Like, maybe there's other hobos. Like, better, better hobos. <laughs> yeah, a higher class of hobo. hobo. <laughs> I would say he's more a serf than a peasant. Yes. Do we ask him his name? Yes, that's a good idea. That's oh, a great oh idea. Me, me name's Arton, sir. What? Artin. Artin. I, I will tell you how to spell it. Uh, no, sir, that's my first name. I don't have a surname. You see, sir, he doesn't even have a surname. <laughs> what kind of family does he have? <laughs> I've been watching uh, that time we got reincarnated, uh, reincarnated as a slime. Oh, yeah. Um, and basically, you give people names and then they like level up and. There it goes. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was thinking we, we give him a surname and then he'll love us forever. Yeah. You know? Ooh. Change yeah. From NPC to a PC. I gave him a gold piece. <laughs> yeah. Right. I now dub the Artin 
Archie. Wait, what? No oh, shame. This is gonna be carried on for generations. <laughs> Listen, he, he he ponders the notion of a last name, um, <laughs> like it's a magical thing. He's just like honored by being thought highly enough to actually warrant a second name of any sort. Put it this way: what what children does he have? Boys, girls? He's got one boy and one girl, sir. Hmm. How about we give him like a name that is a continuation of us? Uh, I can't tell. What you thinking? I don't know. I was. Murder person. We 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 I kind of like that. Yes, it makes sense. <laughs> I am reflecting on this conversation. <laughs> I'm just... That's what it is. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> disappointed in this group of whispering men. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The is welcome, Simon. See you later, Arts and Collateral. Uh, he's got a tear in his eye. He says, thank you, sir. <laughs> I'll be there in the, tomorrow morning, first thing. And he runs okay. off. He just... Now bolts. we can trust him. No. <laughs> <laughs> we have named him, therefore we can trust him. I stopped the fire. Actually, I ironically, I don't know if you've ever heard of the concept of a true name. Yeah, and you like ultimate power over someone. Yes. So basically, you just given this guy his true name <laughs> because he inevitably will be collateral in some form or the or the other, <laughs> or his family will. <laughs> so. You make your way through town. Um, another thing with you guys that rolled so high, um, that would be Xerxes and Siren and Corollas. Um Last time you were in town, one of the things that you noticed was there was a whole bunch of the Navy ships um, that had left. Sorry, there's going to be a funny noise now because I just... The fan is blowing my note page in front of me. Um... A whole bunch of the Navy had actually exited the port and were out on patrols and that because, you know, there had been increased activity from the Sea Princes. Um, you also know that, um, what was his name, old Applegate, had led a small contingent out of town at the same time you were leaving. Um, one of the things that you notice now, as well as you're getting closer and closer to the Ducal Palace, is you're noticing there is seems to be a stream um, of soldiers that are basically moving either towards the dock or back from the dock. Uh, there seems to be a lot of military personnel going about business in, in the city, um, more so than the last time you were here. Um, you can also see that greater effort has been put in um, to to like making sure that you know, like the street markets, the carts and things are always kept clear, so that these patrols and things can pass by without uh, too much interference. And you can see like the the peasantry, the townsfolk, um, as soon as they see one of these bands moving towards them, they just hug the walls. So it's definitely sort of like a martial order that's going on at the moment. But yeah, you approach the Ducal Palace. Um, very much unchanged. You see the, the, the Duke's coat of arms are still magnificently large and plastered on either side of the, the gatehouse. Um, you are met there by four guards with pikes. Um who do recognize you uh, and one of them leads you into the courtyard up the stairs and into the the entrance hall if you will um, you can see a couple of things um, again a whole bunch of nobles a couple of peasants uh, obviously this is one of the duke's no, no justice days basically um, where he dispenses advice or makes judgments on things, uh, everything from flippant, you know, uh, a broken ship or a stolen 
shipment or whatever the case may be, land disputes, you name it. Um, so there's, there's a fair amount of hubbub that you can see there are scribes and pages um, darting here and there. The large um, wooden doors leading into the uh, ducal throne room, if you will. Um, what is the actual word I'm looking for? It's got a, diff a better word. <sighs> Audience chamber. There we go. Um, they are standing open at the moment, and there are some people uh, being allowed in slightly. Um, but you are met um, after a short while by the Duke's Seneschal. Old uh, Rohan Sharnvale. His black skull cap on his head. You see his head is beard trimmed slightly. Uh, he seems to be sporting a new staff, or at least a different one, one that you haven't seen before. Uh, this one seems to have very sinuous dragons curving along it, uh, with a gaping maw at the top, in which there's this white ball that's just very subtly glowing. And he approaches you and gives you a small bow, and he says... Welcome back, gentlemen and lady. I see you received my summons and have arrived timiously. Uh, what summons? This... Didn't Did we just come here because we wanted to? Yeah, I don't remember being summoned. Uh, we, we, there was a note left at the lock in Laurel for us. Oh no, he, he buzzed me, didn't he? He buzzed you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we got your yeah. page. <laughs> <laughs> we just, we just called him back to your page. Um, we got your page. Th th this thing is very loud, by the way. Like it doesn't give you any chance to avoid it. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> shut up. One one does not ignore the duke. Sure, but we came because we wanted to as well. <laughs> it pleases my old heart to hear that. How sarcastic has he been there? Oh. <laughs> it's dripping. <laughs> it's dripping. It's almost gushing out. Um, and he says, Well, we have already received a preliminary report from Sergeant Ives. I hear you lost some marines and a few sailors to your activities. Yeah, the next well, time we request more smarter freaking marines. Yeah, yeah. Um, these marines don't know how to follow orders, and they just got themselves killed. So it's not our fault. Well, you can explain all that to the duke. Well, we do the um, And you see, he waves over a page. Um, who leans down, whispers something in the page's ear, and the page rushes off up the aisle towards the the duke. Um, and waits patiently while the Duke is busy speaking to what appears to be uh, a young nobleman um, who seems to be positioning the Duke for some special trading rights or, or something. Um, it takes five or ten minutes for all this to, to, to be resolved, um, and the Duke motions the page forward. Uh, he looks down, you can see he sort of cranes his neck just slightly to the right, uh, to get a look at you guys uh, waiting in the entrance hall. Um, and he says something back to the page who comes darting you know, through through the, the, the assembled court um, back towards you guys. Um, and in the next minute you hear the Duke's voice carry out the doors. And he orders everybody to clear out. Um, and for the... Uh, crier to basically summon you in and for the doors to be shut. Oh, I will do a retreat. Say again, sorry. I will do a tactical retreat. He <laughs> says, Everybody out, so I'm going to no, no, retreat. everybody in who's in the audience chamber with him out. You must enter. Um, and the 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 Seneschal would like, um put out his staff and poke you in the back and make sure that you enter <laughs> anyway. <laughs> he says, come along now. It won't do to keep the Duke waiting. 
Um, as you enter, one thing off to the side, as you're busy going down the aisle, you see there's the Duke. You can see there are still a couple of guards you know, posted along the, the columns and the walls. Um, two other people are in this room and have remained in this room despite him ordering it cleared. One of them is a young woman with her hair done up in like an elaborate hairdo with like a silver chase net on it um, that's wearing a very familiar looking bright yellow silk dress. You would recognize her as the same young lady um, that was staying at the Lark and Laurel at a point um, and that you also caught a glimpse of well, some of you caught a glimpse of. I think it was Siren, Corollus, and Carcarius. You guys yeah. saw her w along with two footmen in uh, Saltmarsh. Oh, uh, we were extremely drunk. Yes. <laughs> no idea. That, 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 was, that was the entire hypothetical conversation. No, I have no idea what you did. Yeah. <laughs> but you can see that she's sitting off to the side in the stool she has um like a lady in waiting standing just behind her and she seems to be doing just some some hoop work she's busy embroidering something on a hoop um I like slowly like trying to hide within the group she she looks up at the group um with like a very faint polite smile on her face I mean she's an attractive woman um, but I'd like you all to give me some insight checks please no. I'm gonna roll low I'd love just roll low fuck <laughs> <laughs> uh, the rest of you guys insight please wow actually a plus six jeez Okay, that's not bad at all. Um, Good judge of character. So, Cacarius with a 19, Siren with a 20, Beiru with an 18, and Corollas with an 18. Um, when she looks up at you, you can see that, that that smile, that polite little smile, doesn't quite touch her eyes. Um, I could tell you that. Yes, well, seeing as you rolled the 20, you get one additional little piece of information. Um, for just a few moments, her eyes sort of catch yours, Mickey, and hold your eyes for a moment. And as you're watching, you can see that her brow kind of furrows slightly. Um, and then it's just back to this serene look on her face and she goes back to her embroidery ignoring you completely as the Shenishal moves you up um, to about 10-15 feet away from the ducal throne um, you see the duke is sitting there he's wearing a particularly fine noble clothing uh, you see he's wearing black trousers um, with like a silver embroidered um, stripe down down the side of the trousers black black riding blue boots boots you know some boots eh? uh some <laughs> black riding boots um and he's also wearing like a uh, what do you call it um just like a like a no like a black shirt um but the coat he's wearing is a very fine almost a velvety like a very blood red dark red um with high collars um, and you also see this silver embroidery in, in on the left breast. You can see that uh, in the silver embroidery, it sort of like meets with like vines and things and turns into the ducal crest. Um, and he's also wearing a, because it is a day of judgment, um, a thin silver circlet uh, through his dark hair. Um, he waits for you to, to settle and for the doors um, to finish closing uh, at the end of the hall behind you. Um, and stepping out from one of the pillars, you recognize Lord Restford, who comes to stand just you know, to the left-hand side, not quite very close uh, to the young lady, 
uh, sort of between the yeah, the lung the lung oh I can't speak tonight the young lady and the duke um, and he just gives you a, also a polite little nod but his smile seems a bit more genuine um, and the Shenishol takes up his position at the duke's right hand no at the bottom of the stairs and the duke says to you well, welcome back um Please send a message and bring Sergeant Ives in here, would you, Rowan? Um, and you see uh, the wizard. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> the wizard. Do you actually do that out loud? <laughs> yeah, like, so I was like, oh boy. <laughs> um, I'll just the, put a hand on his shoulder. It's like, just be calm. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's wrong. That's so the cool. Duke... Yeah, you know, gives us this message, and you see um, old Rowan close his eyes for a moment, and he mutters something under his breath, um, clearly casting some sort of spell. Um, and while this is happening, the Duke catches each of your stares or your glances, um, your eyes. There we go. That's where I'm looking for, and um, sort of like he's taking the measure of you. He can see. You've clearly, uh, while you have rested, you clearly have a bit more experience waiting you down. Um, And he says, we've heard reports uh, from the good sergeant who will testify to them now um, of some strange happenings from the aisle, but I would like to hear it from you. Who amongst you speaks for the rest? I'll look at Cartarius. <laughs> the captain. Yep. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm captain now then? <laughs> yeah, my uh, roster ended last night. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on your election. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we... After speaking to the soldiers that survived the island... We found it firstly to be infested with undead, but in a strange way, they would only react if you stepped off a certain path. Go on. And coming to the abbey that was there, there were people worshipping a what would the right word be? Chaotic God? Does this God have a uh, name? Did you learn it? Theris Dune. And you see the Duke exchange a glance with both Restford and Sean Vale at this. And he like sort of sits back in his, his seat and he says, um, well that is disturbing. We had no idea that disciples of one of the darker gods had uh, taken up residence there well they no longer do so you do not need to worry about them anymore did you slaughter them for the most part the head the head priest is dead well it sounds like you did me an additional service then but the the strangest still was that when we arrived, the abbey was burned to the ground. And it seems like other, maybe pirates or raiders, had decided to the attack the abbey. Well, for that reasons unknown. What we knew ahead of time when my navy engaged pirates just off the coast. Yeah. But for the reason for why they did it, not even the priests could tell us. Interesting. Interesting. No, what, what, what other reason would pirates have than to try and steal something? They obviously thought something of value was hidden there. Yeah. Did you find anything like that? There were some of treasures and that stored by the priest but nothing nothing that seemed would attract pirates knowingly at least 
he nods at this and he says, um, let's circle back to this story tell of undead creatures. You say they didn't attack all of you, that there was a safe method. Well, there was, when we arrived on the island, Xerxes flew up and saw that there was a path through the dunes. And when we stuck to that path, we had no issues. But on our return, some of the soldiers we left on the beach found it upon themselves to go exploring and ran into the undead, it seems, and they were torn torn apart. So it's still... We did not deal with the undead. There were too many of them to safely deal with, with our numbers. And we're not quite sure how to just yet. Yeah. Interesting. I suppose you'll be looking for replacements for that. For those that lost their lives. Rest with it. Uh, see to it. Did you, did you tell him, sorry if I missed this, yeah. that uh, some of them were sort of insubordinate and just went off and did their own thing? Well, that that was where I said they decided to explore the dunes and got okay. ripped apart. Okay. <clears throat> so someone, we need we need some marines who can actually follow orders if uh, if those are available. And I'm going to restrain myself from saying it. He says, <laughs> "Step forward, tiefling. I want to get a closer look at you." Do you do so? Fluttering forward. <laughs> yeah, fluttering <laughs> forward. <laughs> he says, It was my understanding that you are a sorcerer of some sort. A purveyor of magical secrets. What was Spot your on. opinion on this? This is this island. These worshippers of a dog dark dog god a dog god <laughs> there we go a dark god with these undead monstrosities what would you do to cleanse such a place of these things uh well if we could gather all of them up so that we could potentially uh do some sort of mass spell slash ritualistic paladin thing. I'm not so well versed with the paladin sort of uh, spells, but essentially if we were to get all of them into one central location, we could potentially destroy them uh, a lot easier than having to fight them one by one. He says we can perhaps assist with that you think paladins might be best suited for this task i'll, I'll just add to what Xerxes is saying go I, I believe paladins and maybe some of the more um frontline clerics would be the best way to say it who can handle battle but also have some clerical abilities may also be able to assist in destroying these undead. And we need to uh, destroy them in one swoop if potentially the, we send an entire army and they were to die, I would imagine they would just turn into the undead. So we would need zero casualties. The Duke is nodding at this and you see old Rowan, the Shinnishal, slash court wizard, um, <laughs> takes a step forward. He says, um, your grace, we could petition the Church of Saints Cuthbert. They are avowed enemies of all undead and the darker gods. Perhaps they would be willing to send members of their order to assist us. But we would have to put through the petition um, to the high priest in the old dra. Perhaps you could petition your cousin, the king, to intercede on your behalf. 
and the duke kind of scratches at his beard a little bit um, and he says we will have letters sent north uh, to the capital in the morning um, we will make these requests but I wouldn't get your hopes up uh, we could put try sending a little bit further north as well there are several knightly orders um, that do from time to time uh, work with the kingdom to eliminate such threats, but whether or not they will come this far south is unknown. But we can try. But it's, I think your idea has merit. I, just, I certainly do. And um, as he's saying this, you see the door at the end of the hall opens up slightly. Um, there's a brief, brief little hushed conversation and you see Sergeant Ives slipping into the hall and marching quite briskly up towards and he drops to a knee in front of the, the Duke um, which none of you guys did just by the way <laughs> Bad you are forgiven news. we're past that <laughs> <laughs> I think the Duke has just given up on your uncouth behavior <laughs> it's just like they're not gonna get it. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm a I'm a different culture entirely. I don't. Uh, yeah, it's, it's foreign I to me. Wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I wasn't paying I'm, attention. I'm short enough. <laughs> uh, the the dwarf always looks like he's bowing. Um, <laughs> but then again, he also is a monk, so I think it might also be like that genuflection is just like built in, maybe. I don't know. Um, but old Sergeant Ives, no. He's, the, the Duke motions for him to stand up and he says, Sergeant, um, I have confirmed your story. Um, though you said there was something that you wished to tell me once these uh, good folk were before us. Um, what was that exactly? And he says, Sergeant, I have sort of clears his throat um, takes a deep breath. Um, Your Grace, after we finished with the Isle of the Abbey, we departed the Isle in search of something that these uh, adventurers were seeking, um, which is not what I have to issue with, um, other than we were um, somewhat lost those marines on board and we stopped and we, we 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 brought a strange artifact aboard the ship um there had been apparently been a battle deep beneath the waves um and this artifact is now sitting on the isle of the abbey my lord uh, before we left all of the undead that were still there um had surrounded this object though somehow my current um, I hesitate to call them employers, my current commanders um, over here um, did not seem too concerned I know, right? And, uh, um, you know, he's, he, he, he kind of is like, he's, like you guys are giving him the daggers and the eyes and he's like, he's sort of like trying to take a step slowly to the right to put some distance between you guys um, and he says, and uh well, it is still there, sir. We, we we left it there, and I do not understand it myself, but the undead seem to leave these guys alone. And that's something else. <laughs> oh, God. I'm say, I, I'll chime in and say, <laughs> what he says is true. Uh, that's where my idea of gathering all of these undead together came from. <laughs> Yeah. But, but you we, takes a moment. <laughs> we we left this artifact on the island. Yeah, I remember we, that. We, we we still do not understand it and we thought it better leave it somewhere that it wouldn't endanger the city with bringing it back. But feel free and go and get it yourself. Uh, yeah. I need Enjoy to know two thing. things about this artifact. 
What do you know so, about it? We know... Green. Well, there's that. It's green. And we know it's celestial in nature. He, he had kind of like raises a brow at so you mentioning it's With, celestial in and nature. I'm gonna, and I'm going to make a point of this in my voice going with ties to my god ties to Procan yes this is curious but it sounds like temple business to me I do not make a habit of involving myself in temple affairs I will leave this with you if you can answer me one more question yes what do you intend to do? The sergeant informed me that there appears to be an entity trapped within this crystal. Could you tell, yeah. was the, the strange writing uh, a warning, a spell, something keeping it in, keeping it, it out? That That's unknown to us, which is why we left it there, so I can do more research on it to see whether this is something that should remain trapped or something that should be released. But we do need this uh, as part of our plan to rid the island of the undead. Well, that is good because that was going to be one of your tasks going forward. Um, once we procure assistance from the temples or from one of the knightly orders, um, we will mount another expedition to fully cleanse the island. Uh, with your assistance, you can also perhaps be part of the transportation of such orders. Um, because it is vitally important, even more so... Hmm. And you see, like, pauses for a moment. And he looks Strategic to... Strategic point. Yeah. He, 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 lo he, he looks at Restford. Um, and you see rest, so it gives like a slight nod, and the duke continues and says, What I'm about to tell you does not leave this room. Am I clear? On pain of death. I look, I, I look at Ives. He just sneers at you, <laughs> as if this would, it would be beneath him. You are, you are insulting his honor now. Um... And the Duke catches this, he's very observant, and he says, Be aware, Sergeant Ives works for me. You work for me. Part of his duties is to report on what you do. There will be no punishment for the good Sergeant from your side, for anything or any words he has shared with me. Am I clear? On the record. Yeah. Understood. On the Critical. record. If off the record. <laughs> if I hear that you have deliberately put the good sergeant in harm's way or that you have brought harm to him directly, let us just say that you had best not return to my waters. Um... Just check in with everyone else. Um, are we not like an Ives at the moment? Is that a consensus? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay, good. Very <laughs> right, good. Um, sorry, your, your, your honor. Um, but, so, Ives is good, right? So if he kills off another 20 men because he can't discipline, that's fine. I just want to check. Oh... <laughs> Just, just checking because you know, like, I, I, you know, I got to make sure we've got enough incense to do all the rites for all these dead sailors that keep popping up on our ship when we're not there. Get burned. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Just checking. Just checking. I just, I just want to check. Trying, I'm trying. You know, I'm trying to think if I need to make you roll for this. <laughs> I'll back you up. Make me, make me a persuasion check. Yes, it is true. It is. Can I help him? Sure. What do you say to help him? No, I'll just back him up. Due to a failure for uh, in, like up, uh, instilling structure and discipline within your own men. Oh, right. oh damn! Nice. Twenty-five. Nice. Oh, thank, th I kind of like elbow. Um, Katrina, like, yeah, thanks. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was like a sick bird. The Duke listens intently. And there's another one of those long pauses, as you can see, he is deliberating. And he says, You are perhaps too young to realize this. But it is not always easy to make sure that every order, every command is carried out to the letter. We often lose good men and women in our service when orders are misunderstood or, like you say, there's an independent streak and they, somebody decides to ignore those orders. Um, to a certain degree, the command would be at fault, but by that same reasoning, I would argue that if Sergeant Ives was at fault, for the behavior of his men. Ultimately, as you are superior to him, the fault rests with you as well. And since okay. I put power in your hands, the fault would rest with me. And to some degree, we will all have to carry the burden of those dead men on our thoughts. But would it really help to punish the sergeant? Well, no, oh no, okay, I'll just uh, make a note and I scratch into like a piece of paper. <laughs> Extra incense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of like whisper it out loud to myself, sticking my tongue out of my mouth. And the Duke says, We value all of our men and women. Every soldier, every lowly cook, every lowly pe peasant. Every member of our society has value to us, in one way or another. Mm. Let us agree to this. Sergeant Ives, you will make sure that harsher disciplinary measures are taken uh, in the future. If any survive their stupidity, they are to whip, be whipped. Ten lashes. And you see, like, this is, this is a fairly drastic thing for the Duke to be ordering, because you can see that uh, at the mention of ten lashes, uh, Ives kind of flinches. Oh. I'll take the whip off my belt and I'll say, yeah, I already got the Yeah. <laughs> We're prepared. Um... The Seneschal says, like, 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 quietly whispers to you, that's not the kind of whip we use. But this one's more fun. <laughs> no, it's a sailor's whip. Uh, he makes Fine a note head. to show you the whip that they use, which is embedded with blades. Um, but anyway. Oh. oh um, God. That'll show you a shit. <laughs> so the, the, you see, you, you you feel that you have been somewhat chastised, and so has Sergeant Ives. Um, but the Duke says, "I will allow you to continue your pursuit of knowledge. I will even ask the Seneschal to have a look and see if he can find anything that might assist your research in his." private library that I have paid a hell of a lot of money for. Um, that would be appreciated. But he says, um, you are welcome to take your rest in port. Take some time. Uh, I will have marine sent to you. Um, your sailors that were lost, however, you will need to hire new sailors yourself. Uh, which isn't too much of an issue. This is out of character now. Too much, too much of an issue because you are in a seaport that has a lot of traffic. Um, there's always sailors looking to jump ship. Um, the Duke says there was a matter of payment for your services. Um, 2,000 gold pieces upon completion. Uh, once we rid the island 
of the last dredges of this temple and their monstrosities. Um, we will speak about future compensation. Uh, but for now, I will have 2,000 gold pieces uh, sent from the treasury to your ship. And I'm going to dispense those coins now to all of you. Um, the Duke says, take your leisure in town. Do what business you need to do. Um, your your course for now is free. I will have Rowan uh, reach out to you should you no longer be in town when we hear back about uh, the forces necessary to cleanse the island. But for now, you may go and know that you have served the Duke well and the King. Uh, before he sends us off, when I go, uh, sort of, uh, uh, Your Grace, it would help tremendously if we could uh, outfit ourselves better. Do you have a uh, potential master weaponsmith that we could consult? My personal armorer and weaponsmiths might be available, though they are busy producing arms and armament for my own men at the moment. Um, I will arrange a meeting between you and them sometime in the next week. Fantastic. Hey, Grace, if I may ask one last thing. One what, last thing. What news comes from the West? With we, we noticed on our way here an influx of homeless in the street and refugees of sorts. Ah, yes. I, I was distracted for a moment by other talk. Um, remember when I said to you that you are not to leave this room with certain information? Yes. The following needs to be kept fairly sac sacred, secret, <laughs> so as not to <laughs> cause a panic in the, in the general populace. There, I have been increasing patrols both at sea and on land. Um, I have petitioned the king for more forces and I am attempting to uh, gather a mustering. Uh, we have received increasing reports of attacks um, by the sea princes and also by creatures that, if Lord Redford's tales from Saltmarsh are to be believed, um, are true, uh, the Sahagan have been increasingly active on our, our southwestern coast. There are also disturbing rumors of goblin kin and orcs and giants and dragons and all kinds of but we have not substantiated most of those. The only thing that we can say for sure is, judging by the way our ships were, um, no, there was that attempt uh, to scuttle our ships, uh, to sabotage the port, the docks, um, by some goblin tribes from the Dreadwood. Uh, let's just say I have a lot of things on my plate at the moment. Um, your letters of mark perhaps i will offer a further incentive should you find any keelan merchants or naval vessels in need um, while traveling by sea if you are to assist them i will pay you a gold coin for every sahagan head you bring me and if you can bring me some sort of proof that you've taken down ships uh, from the sea princes, I will pay a bounty on those as well. Consider it done. If you venture inland... Do, Beirut, do you have any of those Sagan like heads and gills still in your bag? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no, I, don't, I, I don't think we collected it the first time we killed them. No, I'm, I'm going to make like I'm looking for the bag in any 
<laughs> um, but the Duke says, the same will go for any goblin can you find. If you rid the dukedom of any of these creatures, any of these monstrosities, I'll arrange some sort of compensation. Uh, we are very, very adept at uh, killing monsters. Uh, heads may be a little bit too heavy to carry. Might we uh, suggest something else instead? Ears. Your left ear from each creature. Okay, left ear. Okay, sorry. Why sorry. left, though? Well, because other, otherwise we could take the left and right and claim as two. Or I could just pay you for each pair of ears. No, yeah, that works. Either way. What if we lose one? <laughs> then you won't be paid. But we have one ear. It's not like uh, so Hagen's gonna let us go away with one of their ears. No. They might even only be born with one ear. You don't know. Very well, you will earn a half price for a single ear. Nice! <laughs> and with that, he says, I have court business to attend to. I have spent enough of my time with you this day. Um, should you need anything, you may contact either Lord Restwood or my Seneschal, and they will arrange it for you. For now, you are dismissed. And he, like, waves a hand, and you see the guards at the bottom of the hall open the doors again, um, and some of the courtiers that have been waiting out there start coming in as you are led down uh, to the entrance chamber uh, by Restwood and Rowan. Um, I've just noticed the time. That took a little bit longer than I anticipated. Yeah, always does, hey? <laughs> always does, and I, I think that's partially my fault, but it's fine. Oh, storytelling, man. It so is. Chill. So, for those listening, I do not know. I'm going to have to talk to Byron for a second. Not Cyan, but Byron. <laughs> um, Byron. At this point in time, we are moving into the downtime activities, which we'll probably continue with next week. Um, you know, for the specific tasks that everybody wanted to accomplish. Um, Byron has been a member of our cast now for, geez, how long? Like more than a year? year? I have no idea. It's been a long time, my dude. Um, and we are very sad to announce that he will be leaving us. Uh, to explore greener pastures of sorts, I hope. <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to, to let you take over for a little bit. Um, and you can tell us how Cyan is going to spend his last day or days with the group. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I think Cyan like, um, kind of knows he's going to be heading off soon. Um, and it's kind of like very free with his money. So like always insisting on paying for drinks. Um, and for like dinner and like tipping heavily, um, Katarina when she's like doing the, the, the music in the, in the pub. Um, so like, um, yeah, I'll be depositing off a thousand gold amongst everyone. Oh, nice. Um, and then, um, the remaining amount's gonna get, um, donated to the, uh, Osprum Church to do some renovations and expand. And like maybe bring in another priest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can help out the one guy that's here. <laughs> that is a very generous amount. Are you keeping that, it here that for That little yourself? acolyte just became, became a priest. <laughs> I guess he probably would. He's probably like the only one that's like, like available. Yeah, so going up in the world. Um, yeah, I think um, yeah, Sian will probably hand over the shield, um, the awareness shield, Sentinel, mm -hmm. back over to um, Carcarius at some point. Alright. Um, I'll find it a good home. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, hopefully. Um, other than that, he's going to keep oh. all his stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, what are you going to say, Carcarius? Uh, let's just say that and slowly wiping away the Osprum paint that you put on the shield. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think he's just gonna do that and like spend some more time just fixing up the shrine that he made at the dockside. At the docks. Okay. Yeah. 
um, and then head over to the capital looking for this um, like uh, grandmother or this priest uh, that he's heard about. Um, uh, Vinet, what was her name? You ask me as I closed my notes, hey? Uh, no, 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 I've got it here, I've got it written here. Uh, Noel Dra. Yeah, that's the capital. Oh. <laughs> no, then it's just the cleric. Yeah, I just know it's an old cleric. Oh, yes, you just, you just cleric heard who this, went this, to uh, Noel Dra. That's right. Yeah. I think, so. yeah, he's going to just pursue that because um, as great as it is, like, you know, <laughs> slaying things in the name of Osprey, he kind of needs answers and uh, it's not really happening for him. <laughs> All right, so you are making your... Uh, I'll call it a pilgrimage, if you will. Yeah. Um, yeah, totally. In search of this old lady who may or may not have the answers that you are seeking. Um, I just want to say thank you very much, Byron, for, for joining us. You will, I've said it before, you will be welcomed back to any table I run, whether it's virtually or in person. Hopefully <laughs> one of these days, once this corona crap is over, it will be in person. Uh, thank you very much. Um, um, thanks everyone else for um, like really integrating me into the group. I really have enjoyed that. Um, it has been a, a good, a good um, experience for me. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, man. It's been fun. Yeah. Yeah, we have to step up our role playing game now. <laughs> oh God! I was gonna say, I, 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 my biggest re regret as a DM is that we're we're losing somebody who was a really excellent RP -er. So, yeah. We all gotta, we all gotta pull up our socks. <laughs> um, who knows? Maybe we'll see you around again uh, for a for a one shot or something. Mm. We'll definitely, definitely keep you in mind. Um, but I think that is a pretty good place to call it for the evening. Thank you very much, guys, uh, for joining. To the guys who popped in on the stream as well, listening in. Um, time to do the usual. Uh, no shameless <laughs> shameless advertising don't forget to follow us on twitch and on youtube and you can get our podcasts on anchor and spotify and all kinds of things um at twitch it's well if, if you're watching it on twitch it's twitch.tv slash good and gaming on youtube you can just look for green goggle gaming on spotify and all the other stuff green goggle gaming you will find it and it's of course the great war campaign um other than that Stay safe, take care, and we will see you guys next week.